Hi, I'm Justin, K, field specialist in horticulture with MU Extension, and I'm here today to share some information on a common disease of high tunnel tomatoes known as Fusarium crown and root rot. Fusarium and crown and root rot is caused by a fungal pathogen. This can survive in the soil for several years, even if a non-host plant is present. Some of the symptoms of this disease, you might notice a wilting of the tomatoes during the daytime. When you come back in the morning, they'll look like they're in good shape, and then they'll wilt again during the heat of the day. This wilting could be following by yellowing of the leaves and eventual plant death. If you inspect the base of the plant, you'll notice a necrotic stem lesion right at the center of the root crown, and if you cut into the plant, you'll notice a discoloration of the vascular tissue around the root crown. Affection occurs through a structure called the conidia. The conidia can be seen in the picture on the bottom right. The blue structures are the part of the organism that can overwinter and survive in crop residue and cause further infection the next season. Affection can occur in feeder roots as well as root wounds and pruning wounds and also graft unions of grafted tomato plants. Infection generally occurs earlier in the season when soil temperatures are around 68 degrees Fahrenheit, but you might not notice symptoms of this disease until later in the growing season. Prevention is very important when considering management of fusarium crown and root rot as there are no effective chemical controls to manage this disease. Using varieties of rootstocks that are resistant to this pathogen, as well as rotation to avoid alternative hosts is very important. You can see a picture here of crop rotation on organic farms. That's a planning manual from SARE. It can be downloaded for a free PDF. And all the links that you see in this presentation will be included in the description of the YouTube video. Trichoderma is a biological control product that is labeled for fusarium crown and root rot that can offer some preventative protection. Also, having a good hygiene program in the high tunnel or the greenhouse is important to reduce the spread of this pathogen. These are some snips from a Cornell publication that shares resistant rootstocks and varieties of tomatoes. You can see that Better Boy Plus and Big Beef Plus are labeled resistant to Fusarium crown and root rot, as well as some other diseases and viruses. Rotation is important when managing Fusarium crown and root rot, although it can be challenging because a wide variety of alternative hosts exist. Alternative hosts can include symptomatic hosts that show signs of infection, as well as symptomless hosts that show no signs of infection. Tomato, pepper, and eggplant should be avoided in rotation. However, a number of brassica crops, such as mustard greens, cabbage, and more, can be a host for this pathogen, as well as watermelon, carrot, celery, green bean, and pea. You'll also want to consider what cover crops you're using in rotation, because things like red clover, white clover, and peas can be symptomless hosts of this organism. Trichoderma is a beneficial fungi that is labeled for fusarium crown and root rot. The specific formulation of Root Shield Plus has two different trichoderma species and is labeled specifically for fusarium crown and root rot. These beneficial fungi are generally applied as a drench or a granular product to tomato plants prior to transplant in the greenhouse or high tunnel. These beneficial fungi grow and multiply to colonize the root surface, which can reduce root stress and kill pathogenic fungi by releasing enzymes that dissolve the cell wall of organisms such as fusarium crown and root rot. Prevention is another key strategy. You don't want to reuse soil or potting media, whether this is transplant media or media in grow bags. You want to disinfect your pots, stakes, and tools and make sure to avoid overhead irrigation. You also want to manage ventilation and circulation to keep relative humidity levels as low as possible, and discarding plant residues such as cold fruit, heavily infected plants is very important. And you'll want to keep these out of the compost pile because your compost pile might not get hot enough to kill these organisms. Removing weeds and volunteer plants, both in the interior and exterior of the high tunnel is important as some of these volunteer plants could serve as alternative hosts for this organism. If you have any further questions, feel free to reach out to me via email. All the publications are linked in the description of this YouTube video so you can dive into more resources.